Good morning. My name is Adam, and I'm an analyst covering financial data and technology companies. Our next speaker is Phil Snow, Chief Executive Officer at Faxet Research Systems. Faxet is a leading global financial information services company. Faxet creates data and software solutions that provide instant access to financial data and analytics that investors use to make crucial decisions. Phil joined Faxet in 1996. He has extensive operational experience across the business and became CEO in 2015. He is also a member of the board of directors. Since our initial investment in Faxet 17 years ago, the company has increased its free cash flow at an impressive low double digit compound annual growth rate. We see a long runway ahead and are excited that Phil is here to present the compelling Faxet story. Now, please join me in welcoming Phil Snow, Chief Executive Officer at Faxet. I think we'd all agree that life might have been simpler when we were all using fax machines. <laughs> and it's easy for all of us in our daily lives now to feel overwhelmed, I think, with the amount of data we get, uh, you know, in our, in our both at work and at home. Uh, and what Faxet does is it really helps cut through the noise for investment professionals like Barron to do their jobs more efficiently and, and to help them surface ideas. Um, so before I get started, I've got the obligatory legal uh, slide here, which just states that uh, I'm going to talk about past performance, uh, but that in no means um, guarantees future returns. Okay, I have clicker issues. There we go. Uh, maybe a little delay. Um, all of us, when we reflect on our lives, uh, probably have those moments, those forks in the roads where we had to make what we thought for ourselves was a big decision. One of those times for me was in 1996. Uh, I was in my early 30s. I'd just gotten out of business school. I had a, a history in biotech, and I developed an interest in the CFA program. And for those of you that don't know, CFA stands for Chartered Finan Financial Analyst. Uh, and a lot of um, people at Barron probably have their CFA programs or CFA um, uh, recognition. So I'd, I was studying for this. Uh, I was in a group, uh, a study group. I was living in California. Uh, and I'll call her Maddie. Maddie was in my CFA study group. Uh, she had a PhD in physics, way smarter than I was. And she was a quant at a very well-known um, investment manager out in California. And I was showing Maddie sort of all, the, all of the job postings that were out there in the San Francisco Bay Area for financial analysts, which is something that I aspired to do. And I saw this curious uh, posting for a consultant at Faxet Research Systems. And Maddie told me, Phil, Faxet's an amazing product. It's not that well known. It's not a household name. But as a quant, I use this product every day. You could do a lot worse than going to Faxet, learning one of the best products in the industry, and then from there, springboarding into you know, potentially a job on the buy side. Uh, so I went for my interview. Uh, my plan was to stay at Faxet for two years. Uh, and clearly, things didn't work out that way. So today, I'm going to talk to you about how I fell in love with this company, how it started, uh, you know, the journey we've been on, and where I see us going uh, in the future. Uh, on that previous slide, actually, I'm just going to go back. Um, what, there are a couple of things to notice here. One is, I think uh, Adam mentioned this in his intro, uh, Barron got into the stock in 2006. Barron is our largest active shareholder, uh, and we really enjoy sort of w working with Barron uh, and talking about our long-term strategy. Uh, since uh, the last 10 or 20 years, Faxet has grown its total shareholder return um, you know, between uh, 15 and 16% over a 10-year period and a 20-year period. I think what you're seeing here is the stock price return, uh, but if you reinvested the dividends, uh, you would have a total shareholder return that was higher than that. So we've been incredibly consistent in terms of delivering uh, shareholder value uh, over the last 27 years since we've been a public company. And we were very proud to join the S&P 500 uh, uh, just a few years ago. The other thing that I think is important to understand about Faxet 
uh, is we're needed. Like when you go through turbulent times in the market, and here you can see the dot-com crash, I'm sure many of you remember that, uh, the financial crisis in 06 and 07, and more recently we've been through a pandemic uh, and we're going through you know, a very uncertain time geopolitically and economically. FactSet weathers these storms incredibly well. And we do that because we have a subscription-based model and we have things that our clients need. So we have data. Uh, and it, think of it as, you know, during any period, you're going to need to go to the supermarket to get food. It doesn't matter what the economic times are. You can think of FactSet uh, some, in somewhat that way for investment professionals. So let's talk a little bit about who FactSet is. At our heart, you know, we have a very powerful combination of data and analytics for investment professionals. Our users are fundamental analysts, quant analysts, portfolio managers, traders, risk and performance analysts, bankers, wealth advisors, middle and front office professionals in financial services. We're a B2B product, uh, and if you're in the industry, you probably know us, but, uh, and if you've been reading, you know, your, um, you know, your, uh, the material you get from Barron talking about the holdings and the returns, some of FactSet's data might be in there, actually. I think it is a, it's a product that firms like Barron use. We have almost every you know, large financial institution globally um, maybe using FactSet. We have 8,000 firms using us today. Uh, we have over 190,000 users, and we have, we have 12,000 employees. We have a large footprint uh, in India, the Philippines, uh, here on the East Coast in the US, London. Uh, we're in a ton of different places. The other thing that is one of, uh, I think, our competitive advantages is our culture. FactSet has a great culture. It's one of the reasons I stayed at the company. We're a roll up your sleeves, problem solving, client centric, really hard work ethic, respectful, innovative culture. Uh, and I think that's something to really keep in mind as investors in terms of thinking about the companies that you invest in. Um, and we've done this consistently. For one of the reasons, I believe, is you know, we, we've grown mostly organically. Sure, we've done 20 or 30 acquisitions during our, during, our, during our life so far, up to 45 years. But these have been primarily tuck-in acquisitions, small acquisitions that we bring into a consistent platform. And through that, we've been able to maintain our culture globally. So I was just in India two weeks ago, 4,000 employees plus. I was just in London last week. That, in, that culture of innovation and collaboration uh, really comes through in everything we do. And this is, this is reflected by what you see here. We were named uh, the 36th, uh, out of all of the US large companies, we were 36th last year on Glassdoor in terms of great places to work. And that has so much to do with our culture. That is, a, that is not a pay to play uh, recognition. This, these are, uh, this is a ranking that comes from employees themselves. So whenever I meet with a new company, um, a CEO, a founder, I'm always really interested to understand what was that spark of innovation, what started that company, and that really helps me understand uh, who they are today and potentially where they're going. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about our origin story. You may not have heard of us. We're, a 40, we're 45 years old. Uh, our company was founded by two gentlemen from Wall Street. One was the director of research at a boutique firm and had, he had very clear ideas about how to present data. And the other was a mathematician, Chuck, who had also taught himself how to program. So the original fact set product was a set of facts, a four page set of facts, which was just chock full of financial ratios, uh, growth rates, numbers, things that you wanted to know about a company. And this was a printed document and it was delivered by by, by messenger to our clients. So that really was uh, how our company started. This is what the product looked like a few years later. Uh, can you imagine loading this terminal up into your, to your van and driving it up to Boston for a client demonstration, right? So one of the things Chuck did was he, he was able to take data that we had on a mainframe and put it into a terminal for a financial professional or a financial firm. And that was actually a pretty big innovation at the time, uh, something that we called data downloading. Fast forward a few years. I think I still have some of these chairs in my kitchen, by the way. 
They still look good. <laughs> but Howard walked into Chuck's office with one of these personal computers that I think he got at Computerland, dropped it on his desk, and he's like, financial professionals are going to start using these personal computers. Let's figure out a way to get the data uh, into this for financial professionals. And Chuck did that. And I believe we were the first company to take data um, you know, in a hosted environment and put it into a spreadsheet environment. And you can imagine the efficiency gains that that gave to financial professionals. So we're no longer typing data you know, from printed documents uh, into a spreadsheet. We are automatically downloading it. At that time, FactSet had you know, just a handful of databases on our system. Uh, we didn't own the data. Our value proposition was integrating data you know, from different databases within financial services, stitching it together, taking that pain away from the client, and then presenting it in a way where they could analyze the data. So very often, if you talk to financial analysts, quants, fundamental analysts, they'll tell you, you know, 80% of the, of the job is getting the data into a format that you can analyze, and then you can really add the value uh, as an analyst or a portfolio manager. And that's really what fact, how Factset was born and what we were good at. The next thing we asked ourselves, and we're you know, a few years later now, is what if we could answer any question that a client asked us uh, you know, about an investment idea? So instead of just looking at a single company or a single security, what if I wanted to look at the entire investable universe of companies and figure out like an idea, back test that, and see if I could beat the benchmark or have superior returns over time? So we invented something called universal screening. So I'll give you some examples here. Uh, what if we asked ourselves, just give me the companies that are in the S&P 500 today. Then we ask ourselves, show me every company in the S&P 500 that's grown its revenues each of the last 27 years. And then show me every company that's increased its dividend each of the last 24 years. Uh, and finally, show me a company that's shown consistent headline EPS growth for 20 plus years. And if you actually do that screen, there's actually uh, just one company that passes that screen. <laughs> I think, Ron, you probably identified some of this back in 2006, which is good. Um, but we, you know, I had to write these codes, essentially, back in the day. And I think some of you, if you were in the business, are still writing them. But it's become more point and click. And particularly now, with the advent of generative AI, we're moving more and more quickly to a, to a place where somebody can just type in in natural language what it is they want to do. Uh, and FactSet could produce the code uh, for them. So that's, I th I th that, that, you know, Back in the day, we had quants, data scientists, and we had fundamental analysts. I think those lines are probably going to begin to blur a bit more. So a few other innovations. In the late 90s, uh, we released something called portfolio analysis. So up to this point, FactSet could create some great technology that allowed you to manipulate financial data um, and you know, build these ideas. But clients began to ask us, Facts that we'd like to put our own data into your ecosystem. You've done such a good job of managing financial data. Let us put our data in there and take advantage of your technology. Uh, and, the, and the first thing we were asked is to load portfolio holdings, so mutual fund data. So in the 90s, firms, particularly in the US, began to load their daily holdings into FactSet so that they could analyze the performance of their portfolio and use all the flexibility uh, that FactSet offered them. And this product is, is amazing, uh, and it's grown, and it's actually now one of our big competitive advantages. There are very few firms that have loaded for the last 20 or 30 years as much portfolio information uh, into a hosted environment as Factset has for their clients to use. So it started off as US equity. It's now truly global. It's multi-asset class. We've added risk, performance, reporting, a whole suite of tools that are used by the middle office at financial institutions. And I would say FactSet is number one uh, in some of those areas and really dominating uh, in that space. This is a great story. Uh, there was a salesperson going to a client with 
one of our most senior technologists. And that client began to ask, uh, Faxet, we love everything you do, you know, within portfolio analysis, screening, spreadsheet environments, but you actually want to take some of that data now and put it into other places. Uh, and, in, and in the cab ride over to the client, this technologist wrote a program that allowed you to kind of get a feed of facts and just put it into whatever environment you wanted. So that might be a quantitative process, it might be some sort of performance process, but that just speaks to the innovation uh, and you know, our culture. Uh, and this is exploding now, I would say. Today, um, our clients uh, want to consume data and analytics in a whole host of new ways. You know, obviously there's still humans in front of TV screens doing analysis, uh, but the amount of things that are happening sort of in enterprise solutions or off platform, uh, and the number of places want, people want to do analysis uh, is, really, is, is really getting bigger. And we've done a lot to invest in our platform to allow clients to do that. So we've talked about downloading, screening, portfolio analysis off platform. I'm now gonna talk about what I consider to probably be the most valuable thing uh, that Faxit has as a company and as an investment, and it's data. So we started off uh, you know, on our journey 45 years ago integrating third-party data. We talked about clients wanting to integrate their own data into our ecosystem. Um, and 20 years ago, uh, my predecessor, Phil Hadley, uh, really recognized the need for Faxet to own more of its own data. Um, a lot of the databases that were on our platform were getting consolidated in the industry, uh, and he recognized the risk associated with that. So we've been on a journey uh, for the last 20 plus years to make sure that we have enough control of the data ourselves. Uh, we did a number of very good acquisitions of, of some data sets. Uh, and we've stood up um, you know, many, many, many locations where we're able to collect a lot of data ourselves. So over half of Faxet's employees, 6,000 of them, are either engineering the collection of content or in some ways collecting it. So that is something to keep in mind when you think about Faxet, uh, particularly now with the advent of generative AI. One thing I wanna really drive home here is that it's not just that you have maybe the biggest catalog of data, um, it's how well connected that data is, how it's stitched over time. Uh, you'll probably see some news out there about generative AI, you know, potentially disrupting companies like Faxet. Um, I think that's a bit misguided. Uh, clients, particularly in financial services, are gonna need very high quality, accurate data that they can trust, that doesn't hallucinate, that goes back through time. So the data we have on our system is not something you can just Google and you know, create from scratch. Better do a time check here. Okay, I better speed up a little bit. Let me talk a bit about our clients, our end markets. Uh, who are our clients? Um, we're a global company, obviously. 64% of our revenues come from the Americas. 36% uh, come from EMEA and Asia Pac. Last year, we grew the Americas and EMEA. I believe it's 6% or 7% and Asia at 8%. And so on an aggregated basis, uh, that was 7% growth. Uh, we're an August company, by the way. Strange fiscal year end. Um, our clients, as I mentioned, we have a lot of clients like Barron that we call the institutional buy side. So 50% of Faxet clients are institutional asset managers, they're asset owners like CalPERS, they're sovereign wealth funds, they're hedge funds, uh, firms that are uh, analyzing portfolios, doing fundamental and quantitative analysis. This is a big piece of core piece of our business and a lot of it's driven by the portfolio analysis suite that I spoke about a few minutes ago. Uh, we have a group that we call deal makers. So if you're an investment banker, starting off your life, you're probably using Faxit or maybe one other product in the industry. Uh, so we have tens of thousands of junior bankers using Faxit. Uh, we have a wealth business, which is our fastest growing business. I believe it grew at 9% last year. So we see a huge opportunity uh, to sell more to wealth advisors, and then we have a very good business where we uh, distribute data through partners that we trust uh, when it makes sense for our strategy. We talk a little bit about the buy side, so firms like Barron. Um, I think they, a lot of them would tell you um, that you know, the cost prices are increasing. There has been a shift to passive management, so active managers are gonna need to come up with the very best ideas, and they're gonna need to do it efficiently. So one thing that Faxit has been able to do 
uh, by reinvesting in our tech stack and our data stack over and over again uh, is solve more problems for clients. So when I was a salesperson 20 years ago, I could just walk into typically a fund manager, introduce myself to a PM, sell Faxet directly. Then we were selling to market data. Today, Faxet is selling to the C-suite, and we're selling to chief technology officers and chief data officers and chief investment officers. And we can do that because we've expanded our suite of products and we've blown open the platform. Uh, 2019, uh, Helen Shan and I, Helen was our CFO at the time. She's now our chief revenue officer. She's out there somewhere. We decided to reinvest in the business in a bigger way than we had historically. And we made a big investment in technology and a few data sets. We, be we became an API first company. And we felt that was super important that we were able to deliver value, fax its data and engines through an API or an application program or interface to clients that were building their own solutions and trying to be more efficient. So if you're, uh, you know, if you're on the buy side, we'll be able to sit down with you now. We'll blueprint your technology stack, your data stack. We'll have some managed services, but we can, we can walk in and say, let us help you save money. And at the same time, that'll be a win-win. So that is a big piece of our current strategy. Um, like I said, many investment bankers, maybe some of you were investment bankers coming right out of school. That's a tough existence. You come out of school, you're working 100 hours a week, uh, you're in Excel, you're in Microsoft PowerPoint, um, you're up late at night building models. Faxit is there to help. We almost have a cult-like following uh, with people that went through investment banking and went on to other jobs in the industry. So we really help people save time there. This is a real quote from Instagram. I'm not on Instagram myself, and I'm not sure how healthy this is, frankly. Like, I feel like I talk to facts at support more than I talk to my family. But it, re it really does speak to the culture. We're here to help. If you pick up the phone and call facts at, you will get a human right away, and someone that that's really has a deep interest in your workflow, your problems, and that is not going away. And I think particularly now, with the amount of stuff we have to do, the advent of generative AI, having that human touch and that human connection, we, we need to keep that, I think, to balance out all the other stuff that's happening. And that's uh, something that we believe at our company. If you did use Faxit in Excel, you will recognize this Excel code equals FDS. Uh, this is actually a, a, someone at one of the ma major media institutions that I spoke to that had been a banker. He said, Phil, wouldn't it be great if you created a T-shirt that just said equals FDS on it, black T-shirt, this is in white. You might see these around. If you want one and you can find a fax set person in the audience or me uh, and you use this back in the day, just let me know. We'll make sure you get one of those T-shirts. Let's talk about our addressable market. Today, fax has got about $2 billion on the top line. Our addressable market is way bigger than that. So despite all the success we've had, the growth being in the S&P 500, this is at least a $30 billion industry, and, and it's expanding. Uh, and all of the investment that we've made just makes me really optimistic about what it, what it is we can do moving forward. Uh, we typically have a build mentality. I spoke to you about you know, growing primarily organic growth. I think there's a lot of merit if you can, if you can get organic growth, reinvest in your business, keep the culture, be one product, that's an advantage. Uh, but we do partner uh, you know, where it makes sense for us. We partner a lot. Uh, and we also do targeted M&A where it makes sense for us as well. There's also a lot of noise years ago about you know, the, the being less opportunity to sell desktop products to investment professionals. So I want to bust that myth. You know, there's at least a million screens out there for firms like Faxet to go capture. And in the last five years, we've almost doubled our user base. A lot of this has come through the big explosion we've had in our wealth advisor business. Uh, I think it was four or five years ago, we were able to win uh, Bank of America Merrill Lynch, the thundering hood. So a lot of advisors using Faxit, and we've been systematically knocking out uh, more large firms using our product, uh, which is a relatively new product for us. The other thing about the wealth space is we're in a relatively small sliver of that segment today, uh, not like the institutional buy side where we have more of the workflow. So I see a big opportunity for us to get into some adjacencies there. And, and it feels like the wind is, our, wind is at our backs, particularly for this segment of the market. 
As we've grown, we've maintained our quality. We have an exceptional uh, retention rate in terms of our annual subscription value and our clients. Uh, that second slide I showed you where we were weathering storms, I think that this, this really supports that, that Faxit is a needed product, and through any market, we're able to kind of stay there and be sticky with our clients. So let me talk a little bit about the future. I'm just gonna double down with you on the value that Faxit has in the data on our system. We have 35 core, core content sets that we, set, that we collect ourselves. We have over 1,000 third parties that we work with that contribute data into our platform. You should think of us as a platform company. And we have over 15 million portfolios getting loaded into Faxit on a nightly basis for portfolio analysis. So again, the, like the totality of that data and how it's connected and the tools that we give you to analyze it, that is very powerful. And there are just a handful of companies on the planet that have uh, this, uh, eco, like an ecosystem like this for use in our industry. We're also becoming more of an end-to-end -end enterprise solutions provider. I spoke about that particularly on the buy side. Being open, flexible, and modular, that goes into uh, the point I made about coming API first. Uh, and for the last year or so, we've been racing uh, to take advantage of um, you know, a lot of the technology that's coming out related to large language models and artificial intelligence. I love this slide. Um, you know, becoming API first meant, really meant that we were creating Lego blocks for our clients. So if they wanted to build things themselves, if a fintech company wanted to build something, um, if we wanted to build something, making those Lego blocks consistent for anyone that's creating value in the FactSet platform, we've been on that mission. We can give you the Lego blocks. If you want the car, if you want Hogwarts, if you want the Mona Lisa, like we'll deliver you the whole thing as well if you want it. We're providing a lot of that optionality in the market. We're also very proud to be partnering with a lot of firms. Uh, many of you may have heard of Snowflake. Uh, they're an excellent cloud provider leveraged by many industries, but a lot of firms in financial services. So this is a great example of us placing all of the value we have uh, in the cloud for our clients to use if that's the environment they'd like to use it in. So we were first in with Snowflake in our industry, and we were very proud to be uh, named their partner of the year last year in 2022. No presentation uh, can be complete these days without talk of generative AI. So let me tell you about our approach here. It's moving so quickly. We're moving on a weekly cadence. We're reimagining the Faxit experience to provide that mile-wide discoverability. So if you remember that, those screening codes that I showed you, we really want people to be able to go into Faxit now, ask any question uh, in natural language, uh, and give them an, env an environment to explore. We also want to be able to automate uh, workflows for our clients, and we want to give you, um, uh, you know, uh, as firms, the opportunity to be as innovative uh, as you can using these tools. Um, we, were, we spoke recently at MIT. We were on a panel, uh, you know, one of my colleagues, and I, you know, we have the whole company behind this effort. We created something internally called Faxit.io, but we've given every one of our employees the ability to work with this new technology uh, on top of the Faxit data. So this isn't a group in the corner exploring this. Uh, it's a, an entire company effort to take advantage of what we see in front of us in the marketplace and really leverage uh, that data uh, that we just spoke about. So this is a bit of an example. So for that mile-wide discoverability, uh, being able to go in, uh, ask uh, any question of Faxit, and then providing you know, some sort of graphic uh, to help you prove it, essentially. So our commitment to our clients, we built a lot of the foundation here, is if you ask us a question using, um, you know, that the, the leverages a large language model, there'll be a prove it function. You'll be able to come in and understand where the data came from, what were the sources of the data, what was the code that we used to generate that data, uh, and this, and, and we'll also suggest to you some next steps, things you might want to automate in your workflow. And this is resonating really well. We've been out and talked to 30 of our largest clients about this, and we've gotten a lot of great feedback about how we're approaching this and thinking of it more as a workflow and not just a back and forth in terms of questions. 
you know, we really imagine a world where, you know, we can really further automate that work of an investment banker, um, a perform portfolio manager, and, or a performance analyst, and a wealth advisor. So we're, 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 we're on this. I would imagine that in the next few quarters, we'll begin to release some functionality. Um, and this is something that I believe is not hype. Uh, and that needs to be taken very seriously. Obviously, there are a lot of important things to think about, particularly for a highly regulated industry like financial services, uh, but this, for me, is not a fad. So to conclude, you know, FactSet is a growth company. Um, for me, as the leader of the company and for my executive team, you know, we believe the most important thing is long-term value for our clients. That means reinvesting in the platform and uh, focusing very heavily on, on top-line growth while at the same time operating efficiently and continuing to deliver cash flow and earnings to our clients like we have you know, historically. Um, we're client-obsessed. You know, we know that we're in service of our clients. Our clients are what's mat what matters. We love our product. A lot of us use our product every day. And the fact that we have sort of that consistent culture uh, really speaks to that, and it's something that we build on. And we're innovative. You can see through our history, you know, there are a lot of innovations. A lot of those innovations we still leverage today. Uh, but we're really focused on the future and what it is we can do next to continue uh, the great performance that we've had as a company over time. So that's it for me. Hopefully, uh, if you didn't know anything about us, uh, you know a little bit more than you did when you walked in this morning. All right, th thanks a lot, Phil. That was a great presentation. Yeah, um, great presentation. So I think we're, we're going to take questions from the audience now. While you th think of your questions, maybe I'll, I'll start with one. Just you, know, you mentioned at the end, obviously, investing heavily in your product is one of the hallmarks of FactSet. So just talk about where are you investing heavily most right now, and what are you most excited about over the next several years? Yeah, thanks, Adam. So we're definitely continuing to invest in technology. Um, generative AI was you know, one of the ideas that got the most funding from us in last year's investment process. We are also very, investing very heavily in private markets. Um, it's a smaller piece of our business, but one of our fastest growing. Uh, and there's been a big trend you know, in the industry for firms to become more multi-asset class, invest more in private markets. So uh, back in 2019, when we made that decision to uh, reinvest in the business, it wasn't just the tech stack, uh, but private markets was, was another area where we see a ton of opportunity moving forward. And, and talk about the decision to be an open platform. Not everyone in the industry has made that decision. Talk about when you made that decision and why it's so important. Yeah, I think we've, all, we've always had a rich history of partnership uh, in terms of the data that's on our platform. And really, it's just sitting down with clients. Like, we listen to our clients. We want to solve problems. We want that 10 or 20 year relationship. Um, and it was just becoming clearer and clearer to me that as we built more solutions, uh, that there were, you know, not everyone was just going to take everything out of the box, nor should they. Otherwise, you end up with a bunch of firms that have exactly the same process. Firms like yours need to differentiate yourselves, right, to win in this marketplace. And for me, that just felt like the right thing. And plus, you know, you look around at the rest of our lives and you see this trend, essentially. There are a lot of platform companies out there that have been very successful. So. You know, if you can become more of a two-sided platform where people can come in and create value, I think, this, I, I think that business model makes a lot of sense. Yeah. All right, I see. Let's go to number one. Uh, hey, uh, uh, Mark Skousen. Um, tell me, uh, um, you said that, uh, that uh, Barron is not only in, an investor in your company, but a client. Yeah. Uh, and, and maybe Ron or, can answer this too. Uh, in what way does uh, Barron use uh, fact check as a screening process and has it improved their performance? Well, I, I don't think I'm in a, the best position to answer that. So maybe uh, Barron, uh, Ron, Ron, do you want to take a crack at that? I give our analysts a choice of whether they want to use Bloomberg or FactSet. And uh, I, I prefer them to use FactSet. And, uh, you know, we've been, it's been very helpful to us across the board. Uh, as far as uh, I'm concerned, for me, uh, people have to help me use the systems um, as much as they can. And, uh, but, it, but the great system, great people, uh, 
love the investment and love how they're helping our business. I think they could be using us for more, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I am certain we can be using them for more. Uh, number four. Good morning. You mentioned uh, M&A very briefly. I know it's been a relatively quiet time for the M&A market, generally speaking, um, for quite a while now. But I'm curious if it's opening up and you're starting to see any interesting uh, acquisition opportunities that might make sense for Vaxet. Yeah, thank you for that question. Yeah, so we certainly are seeing a thawing there. Um, you know, I, I wonder if some of the firms are still, you know, uh, looking for the valuations that they might have expected a few years ago. Uh, but we're certainly beginning to see uh, some interesting things out there, and and I think a lot of the private equity, you know, sponsors that have been in these, uh, you know, in some of these companies are going to need to show some returns over time. So, you know, areas that Faxit has been focused on wealth and wealth technology, I spoke about that a little bit, and private markets, those are probably two that, you know, we spend most of our time scanning the market for and talking to other firms about. Let's go to number 11. <laughs> th th thanks for recognizing the upper deck. <laughs> uh, John Norwood here. Great presentation, Phil. I'm wondering about the move to more uh, passive investing and, and how that's shaping fact set. Yes, yeah, so I think the great thing about being in our business is we, you know, we, we serve all types of firms. So. You know, there are some very successful passive managers out there, uh, but passive managers still need technology. They still need data. Uh, the portfolio, portfolio analytics suite that I spoke about, uh, you still need a lot of those enterprise solutions to run your business. So, you know, we, we, we certainly see opportunity everywhere. Uh, number eight. Yeah, good morning. Uh, thanks for taking my call. Uh, so, uh, earlier you mentioned that there were two companies that uh, passed the screen for growing revenues and dividend over 24 years. What was the other company? And then the question for Ron is, do you have that company in your portfolio? <laughs> <laughs> Answer is probably. <laughs> I'm not going to say the name of the company, but if you want to subscribe to Faxet, you'll be able to figure it out. <laughs> uh, number three. <laughs> Great presentation, thank you so much. So I didn't want to, I did not want to bring this up, by the way, speaking on this thing is weird. So bear with me guys. Um, Ron brought this up, so why FactSat and not Bloomberg or Reuters or S&P Global, I mean yeah. from SNL? Yep. Um, what's the unique value proposition yeah, that you guys so have? It's, it's a great question. Is that, is that the full question? Uh, I had another question just because I'm in AI and wanted to ask, do you build your own LLM models right now or do you use like already built by like models like Meta's Llama or, yeah, yeah well, thank so, you. So I'll, yeah, I'll take the, thank you for both of those great questions. So yeah, I think you did a good job of naming some of the other bigger firms in our space. Um, <laughs> <laughs> in terms of FactSet's competitive advantages, um, one is the data, right? So I think um, the fact that we have, uh, and, the, and the fact that we're open and we have a lot of choice on our platform, and, and how well we connect the data together, uh, that's, that's one thing that I would point to. I think the open uh, technology, the open tech stack, um, not, not all of our competitors, I think, are, have that approach, although I think inevitably uh, people may be forced in that direction. Uh, so that's another one. The portfolio analysis uh, suite that I spoke about, that being such a moat for us, particularly in the institutional asset management or 50% of our business, uh, many of the firms you mentioned don't have uh, you know, co co competition there. And I would just go back again to culture and people. I mean, some of these firms have great cultures, but I think if you're looking for long-term uh, investment and a company you believe in and a strategy you believe in, I, those are some of the things that I would focus on for facts that we're, we're, we're playing with a lot of these large language models. Uh, I don't think yet we've committed to building our own, but frankly, we're not sure that's the right strategy. Um, I think, you know, my feeling is that the compute and these, and these models um, will, will become more and more democratized and may end up converging. 
and that the real value, again, is having the data. So it's how you apply it to the data and the data you own. That, that for me, is the real value. And these models are evolving very quickly. A lot of the, a lot of the smaller um, startups that I speak to in this space, they're flashing back and forth week to week, uh, testing it out themselves. So. Great. That last question it was asked by someone, by the way, who we're about to hire. <laughs> uh, number seven. Good question. <laughs> we love the job you're doing. How long will you stay on as CEO? And the second question is, are you frustrated that the great recent per business performance hasn't been reflected in your stock price? Well, I, I'm not going to answer how long I'll be CEO. I can tell you I'm having a lot of fun. You know, I think this is an amazing company. And I feel very fortunate to have been able to uh, work at this company as long as I have and, and lead it for the last eight or so years. Um, you know, I think you were, you know, I think we, we, we've performed very well over the last 10 or 20 year period. Again, we're a long-term investment. Uh, I think we've held up exceptionally well in the last year or so, but I think, we, you know, we're not, we're not a company that necessarily focuses on quarter to quarter, um, you know, what's our stock price this quarter versus last quarter? Uh, we're, we're very much a company that believes in the long run and investing and just delivering consistent returns and letting the, the, to the total shareholder return uh, take care of itself. Thank you. Uh, number two. Thank you. Over the last year, we continue hearing about how much companies are investing in AI. And sometimes I find it very confusing to understand what does that mean relative to what you used to do and how you used to invest your capital in hardware, software, and now the talk is now we're investing in AI. Yeah. Can you simplify that? What does that mean for you, your company, what's different? And second, how is that better for your customers now yeah. than it was before? Well, Thank you. I think it's a great question. So obviously there's a lot of buzz around it now, but you probably guessed we've been using this techniques for a very long time, right? So. Uh, you know, we've been using artificial intelligence, natural language processing, uh, machine learning, um, as we've collected more and more data. Uh, so, and we've automated more of our own content collection. So like all technology, it's a journey. This is a bit of an inflection point, I think, which you get every now and then, uh, where, the, where this has become more readily available for firms like ours. So, you know, we're, we're, we're not like betting the whole company on it because we have a very successful business already, uh, but a lot of the incremental dollars uh, that we're spending uh, are going into testing out some of these language models and making uh, the tools available to our employees and focusing on uh, product innovations that will be leveraging this. Hopefully that uh, gives you a better idea. Unfortunately, we're, we're out of time, so why don't we thank Phil one more time for the great presentation. Thank you. Thanks.